or not to act? That is the question. They say that all the world's a stage and all the men and women are simply players. But it seems to me that the only stage is Europe and the costumes all ivory layers. They say that I can't act, but they don't know that I don a mask of whiteness every day just to be allowed to put on a show. They say that I can't act, but they don't see the performances I do in front of my mirror every time I have to meet some director or producer, Anthony or John. They look at me with a smile that kills them to even put on. The same smile rests on their face as they slide a page across the table. Terrorist sprawled across the front page. Eyes that want to meet mine but are unable. It's a 9-11 documentary, they say, nodding, as if I should thank them for providing proof of my otherness, proof of my label, the glass box they cannot see me without, the gag to silence every one of my shouts. So I turn to them, and the mask slips on again. It's natural as breathing, but inexplicable pain. I want to scream at them. I want to shout. Look at me. Look at my hiding skills. What in my masquerade ever makes you doubt that I could play characters like Hamlet or Macbeth? Characters from King Lear or The Tempest? But no. You only see me as fit to play Caliban, the Indian girl, or the Taliban. Two or three lines and some stage directions. What does it matter to you? As long as you have diversity points for your next election, inclusion means nothing to you. See, that's what I want to say. That's what I want to say. That's what I'm dying to say. That's what my heart would pour out to say. That's what my soul desires to say but I can't. It's not permitted by my mind, not by the rational voice inside that whispers over and over, you guard your words as you guard your wealth. For both your words and this English language are loaned to you temporarily by a white man. They are not yours to own. He who controls them, he who conforms them, he who manipulates them, he who changes and chops them, he who looks at you with false smile and welcoming eyes. He who looks at you in surprise, even though he knows you can't have just one glass of wine. So I take it. I take the role. You're all looking at me with surprise. I can see the question in your eyes. Why would you take it? Why would you accept it? Why don't you stand up? How can I stand up? Why do I have to stand up? When you've been forced into the back seat all your life, forced to accept every white man's strife, when you've been made to be backstage, wouldn't you take the first opportunity to get up on stage? When you've been silenced all your life, wouldn't you take the first opportunity to speak live? Would you watch your family suffer to eat, knowing, knowing that you can aid their hardship with ease? Would you watch your children die, knowing that the money to help them there lies? So, I took it. Anthony and John jump up in cheers. They have beaming smiles I haven't seen in years. The celebrations begin. The phone starts to ring. They're bellowing over the phone. We got the quota. We got the quota. My mind is turning and twisting. My presence barely existing. Except as a tick on an ethnicity box. A diversity advert to raise our stocks. I sold my values to become unvalued. I adopted the voice of a colonizer to be silenced. In my pursuit of seeing the world, 
I became blind. Even now, you sit and you watch me tell my struggle. You sit still and you watch, maybe you giggle. And when this ends, maybe you give a round of applause that lasts 20 seconds until the next show comes on. See, these stories pass you by and it's so easy to forget. But just remember this one secret. Shakespeare isn't famous because he said to be or not to be. Shakespeare is famous because men who look like him control everything you see.